Today we're going to be talking about arguably one of Jesus' most famous miracles, aka feeding the 5,000, and why he probably shouldn't have done it. Now, to understand that claim, you need to first get context of what Jesus did and then how the people of his time saw it. Remember, a healthy way to read the Bible is to ask yourself the question, who was this written to? Why was it written? And then finally, how does it apply to me? So let's walk through that. First and foremost, the Gospel of John was written to show that Jesus is God. That was really John's intention. And you can see that in John 1, where he starts his Gospel very differently than any of the other writers do. And then by John chapter 6, we get an interesting story. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far sea of Galilee. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw the crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Look, the people were coming out of their free will to see Jesus. No one was forcing them to be there. In fact, they were just curious. So his disciples thought that, Okay, he's going to use this time to teach them. The idea of feeding them probably didn't even come to their mind because it was such a large number. And I don't think the people coming out expected to be fed. So therefore, it's a miracle that Jesus did, just does out of the goodness of his heart and not out of a necessity like he does with some others. Let's continue reading. In verse 7, it says, Philip answered him, It would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. So, There's 5,000 people, but Jesus receives lunch from a poor boy. The reason I say he's poor is because the words that were used to describe, the reason I tell you he was poor was because his lunch was made of barley bread, which was grain that in Israel at this time was a third of the price of wheat. It was grain that was used a lot of times to feed animals. And so poor people would buy that bread. Secondly, he got fish. And the word here in, in Greek tells us that it's a very small fish. So this boy doesn't have a lot, yet Simon Peter's brother Andrew comes and kind of volunteers his lunch. Jesus took the loaves of bread and gave thanks and distributed those to all who were seated as much as he wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves that were left over by the people who had eaten. So even though his disciples didn't see a need for the miracle, they still got to participate in it simply because they were following Jesus. And all this stuff seems good. It warms our heart. We get to see the loving, kind nature of Jesus on earth. But then something odd happens at the end of this section. It says, After the people saw this sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Why would they do that? Make him king by by force, after this miracle. I mean, think, before this has happened, Jesus has cast out demons. Jesus has healed the blind. He's He will later he raise the dead. He does all of these miracles. But for some reason, feeding the 5,000 is the miracle that they want to come and make him king. Now, remember, the Jewish people probably would have been familiar with someone else that did a miracle like this. Moses, when he was walking through the desert with over a million people of Israel, God rained manna from heaven, showing the ability to make food out of nothing. But here, Jesus does a similar yet different miracle, and they want to make him king. Now, in the Near Eastern times during war, there was a strategy used by the defensive people. So if so, we see this throughout Scripture. Whenever a stronger army comes onto the city, what stops them from being able to invade is the walls. From Jericho to the besiege of Jerusalem, the people of the defensive side would go inside of their city, 
close the gates, and the walls would keep out the enemies. Because as the enemy attacked, you could shoot down on them with arrows, you could pour hot tar on them. But what is interesting is how you can defeat someone that's in a siege is just outweigh them. They may have food stored up for two weeks, two months, or even two years. So you just set up a camp outside of their walls and then eventually you'll win because they'll run out of food. Even if they have a well, they will run out of food. But if you have a king that can multiply food miraculously for what seems to be as many people as needed, because this was 5,000 men plus their families, then he's the king. That means you would never be defeated in war because food is ultimately what would cause people to surrender. Here is why I say that Jesus should not have done this miracle. So when I say Jesus shouldn't have done this miracle, I'm more doing it facetiously because the people interpreted the the wrong way. And Jesus knew that they would do this, yet he still does the miracle. And I think this teaches us something that is very, very important. In the beginning of Galatians, it says, am I trying to serve men or serve God? For if I was trying to serve man, I would no longer be a servant of Christ. And what's important about that in reference to this miracle is Jesus' goal was to demonstrate that he is the prophet that Moses had predicted to come. He is the Messiah that had been predicted for generations to come. And it doesn't matter that some people might misinterpret his actions, though they are pure. He is still going to walk in what God is calling him to do. So here's my bottom line. The one thing I want you to take away from this is that some people might try to attack you for serving God. They might try to say that your actions, they're not pure. You're, You're just doing this for yourself. But when you know that I'm trying to serve God, I'm not trying to serve man, then even though your actions might be misinterpreted at some That should not prevent you from doing what God is calling you to do. Thanks so much for watching this video. My name is Logan. I'm reading through the whole Bible with you in hopes that we can grow in our love of Christ together. So if you want to join me on that journey, just look in the description. If not, leave a like. It really does help the channel. And I'll see you back here later as we continue to read through scripture together.